Hey there, Smoke Master D coming at you with another Barbecue Buyer's Guide. This time to Australian Offset Smokers. From my accent, you may notice that I'm not Australian, uh, but I do like analyzing smokers and what's the best to buy. So if you are an Australian, I do hope that you'll stick around and see what uh, my analysis and overviews have to say. Uh, but yeah, let's get to it. So first off, we have chapter times. So if you do want to skip ahead, uh, you know, you can use these to do that. Also, please do like this video and subscribe to my channel uh, as I'm always trying to put out barbecue content. All right. And now um, I'm going to go over a few basics, uh, mostly just for the Australian audience about uh, what you might be looking for in an offset smoker. The first thing is metal thickness. So thicker metal is better for heat retention, fuel efficiency. Quarter inch thickness is the gold standard. When we get to charts, uh, you're gonna notice the weight of the smokers. Um, I didn't go figure out for each one the exact thickness. The ones that are bolt together, that are you know mass produced, they're probably going to have thinner metal, and I'll tell you which ones those are when we get to them. All right, and now some basics for traditional flow versus reverse flow. Now, one of the things about this is a lot of these traditional flows, I think, are going to have some plates in the bottom too. But the thing about reverse flow is that it has a plate all the way from the firebox side to almost the end of the main chamber. And so smoke and heat are going to go all the way to, to the other side, come back up and around uh, the grate or the grill where the meat is, all the way over it to the first side and up out the fire stack. So you see the stack will be like in the middle of the smoker, right next to the firebox for these reverse flow ones. Uh, traditional flow, you know, it's just straight from the firebox over and out the stack. Uh, but like I said, I do think, and we're going to see this, uh, especially in the Hark smoker, you're going to get a very good visual of that. But there's going to be plates in the bottom of some of these. Now, in America, uh, and particularly with companies like Mill Scale and Workhorse Pits, uh, there aren't any plates uh, in the bottom. So um, it can be done. But I don't know how popular that style is with Australian builders. So, um, and a lot of these are, don't show very good pictures of that. So, you know, this Southern Cross smoker, I actually have no idea if it has plates in the bottom or not. I would suspect so, especially with that stack being as high on the barrel as it is. But I don't actually know, right? So, uh, the real breakdown, though, in most people's mind is about convection. And the less plates you have in your smoker, the less restriction and flow, and maybe the more convection. Now, that isn't to say that if you have a reverse flow smoker that you don't have any convection. There's convection and radiant cooking in both of these, right? Uh, but the idea is, is that you have more convection or better convection. And convection is heat transfer through air. Air and smoke touching the meat, right? And that's going to give you better bark. So the more airflow over the meat, the better the bark is. Uh, and But uh, especially if you have a, a direct line of sight from the fire to the meat in a traditional open flow, you can have some radiant heat coming off the fire there too. Now distance plays a factor, but the one thing about these plates is if they really do heat up a lot, the radiant heat can come off of them and cook your meat that way, uh, cooking it faster and then making, you know, maybe faster cooking is what you want, but it does uh, result in less, less convection cooking which might be uh, bark that's not quite as good. So I'm a, a traditional flow guy. That's what I like. But I can see, all right, if you want a reverse flow smoker, the, the main benefit is that 
the way that it's set up, you're going to have more even heating across the chamber. And of course, with those plates on the bottom of the traditional flow, that evens out the heat. There's other ways to do it. Uh, and if you look at mill scale and workhorse pits, uh, they have engineered their smokers to have uh, at least, you know, for workhorse, it's pretty much the whole chamber. For mill scale and several others, it's, you know, the latter three fourths are, are going to be pretty even heated. Uh, so it can be done without plates. Now, some more basics, mass produced versus hand built. So you're going to have Hark and Wildfire, and they're going to be mass produced bolted together, right? So that really helps in the shipping costs. They can send it to you in a box. You can put it together with bolts. Um, but the one thing about that is the seams where you bolt things together, uh, there, there can be heat loss from that. And in general, it's going to be uh, thinner metal just because of shipping is, again, uh, and price, right? It's not going to be quite as good with heat retention. And in winter, with cold winds, that kind of thing, it really can affect your cook. Now, there's things you can do. You can get a welder's blanket, throw that over your smoke chamber and firebox. Uh, so it's not like it's a deal breaker in the winter altogether. Uh, but just in general cooking, it's good to have better heat retention than not. Uh, so hand built, you know, you're going to have welded together. Uh, you're going to have thicker metal. The heat retention will be better. Uh, and you're going to probably have a smoker that's going to last longer too. Uh, thicker metal, uh, if it starts to rust, you can do things about it for longer than with something that's thinner. Uh, but overall, you know, they both work. They both produce great food. So, you know, it really depends on what you're looking for and your budget, actually. So... All right, and one thing to also know, all the dollars in this episode are going to be Australian dollars. Currently, it is 69 cents per Australian dollar. So the U.S. dollar is doing a bit better than the Australian dollar right now. That changes. It fluctuates, goes up and down. Uh, but for my American viewers who are watching this and want a little bit of context, there it is. Uh, so you might think, wow, these prices are high. But in reality, they're a little bit lower. Uh, in American dollars. All right, and we have maps. And why do I show maps? Because shipping, especially on these hand-built models, can be a big factor in the price, right? So, you know, the further it has to go, uh, fuel costs have been very high lately, so those shipping costs are going to be even higher. Uh, but let's take a look. If you're out in Perth, Western Australia, uh, there is only one option that came up for me, and that's this DSB Custom Smokers. So hopefully they're what you want. Uh, if we go over to the East Coast, which I think is much more heavily populated, we're going to have Iron Fire uh, Smokers up there in Yapoon. I believe that's how you say that. Uh, you come down to Brisbane, and you have Bullock Head Creek Barbecue Smokers and Grill out in Red uh, Dirt City, I believe it is, which is just east of Brisbane, you have Red Dirt Smokers. If we come down to Sydney, we have Metal Monkey Engineering as well as Hayden Barbecue Smokers. And if you go down to Melbourne, which apparently is, uh, you know, very south, you have Southern Cross Smokers. So, you know, your proximity to one of these companies could be the difference between you know one price and another and it may make you want to go with somebody nearby all right fully custom shops so i put in a few shops here that didn't have a regular price for you know sort of a standard smoker uh and i wanted to give them a shout out even though i'm not going to be analyzing them really closely uh, just in case you're close to them and you want to consider them. So let's take a look. We have that DSB Custom Smokers that was from Perth. Looks like they have reverse flow smokers. So you have uh, you know a smaller barrel there and a larger barrel. 
kind of looks like maybe 16 inch diameter there and maybe 24 inch on the one to the left. So uh, if you want a reverse flow and you're out in Perth, could be a good option. All right, Tavoli designs. Now I didn't get uh, a place for them. It's like I didn't, I asked them where they were out of. They never got back to me. They're somewhere, uh, but they also try to make their smokers art, right? So it's a really good looking smoker, really artistic. Uh, you know, that's not really me, but it could be you. Uh, and, you know, it looks like it'll work well uh, for a, a smoker. It looks pretty big, too. Then we have Metal Monkey Engineering. They were near Sydney. Uh, looks like they do a lot of interesting designs. Uh, this was the only offset smoker I saw on their website. Uh, they look like they can. Uh, it also looks like they have <laughs> a stack that uh, is a, you know, truck exhaust there, which I like it. Yeah, uh, but, you know, um, they are what you see there. And then Hayden Barbecue Smokers. Uh, I like the, the stack collector there. They look pretty solid. Uh, it was a little too bad that they didn't have, you know, more that I could analyze. But, uh, yeah, they look good. If you're in the Sydney area and you're looking for a smoker, they could be the ones you want to go with. All right. And then Cannon Pits Australia. I asked them for a location. They never got back to me either. Uh, there is a Cannon Pits in Texas. Uh, and it looks like they have the same designs. I'm not sure. I actually have no idea how Cannon Pits decided to be out here in Australia. Uh, I know that a lot of American offset smoker makers are selling in Australia. Of course, I'm not covering them here, but you can see some of my other videos to see uh, what I think of them. I have a high opinion of uh, Horizon smokers, but these, uh, these smokers are built in Australia by a Texas company, and I'm not entirely sure what that affiliation is. You know, who did they send somebody out there from Texas? Uh, did somebody from Australia come over and learn how to make these in Texas? No idea. Very interesting, though. If you know, please put it in the comments. All right, shops with more standard products. All right, and these ones I'm going to be looking at a little more closely. All right, we have Hark. Okay, so the first of two uh, bolt-together style traditional flow smokers. We've got the Chubby offset smoker there which is 1150 and the hark texas pro pit which is 1699 now they have one that's smaller i decided not to cover it but if you wanted something smaller uh, than either of these you could look that up and let's take a look they have a bottle opener on there uh you know if you want a, a cold beverage while you're smoking that could be nice warming rack now, these are the tuning plates that I was talking about before. So, you know, the reverse flow, you can, it's, you know, all together. There aren't any holes and it goes all the way across. But these, you can see that there, it looks like there's four holes. Maybe that, that's where screws or bolts, bolts there. But as it goes across, more and more heat and smoke is released up to the top. So it's basically a bottom to top smoker, uh, which, you know, there are reverse flow designs that are top to bottom or a little bit more side to side. But, uh, you know, it works and it has those plates there. Uh, so you see that. But, um, yeah, there is a cooking chamber grill. So if you open up the firebox, you can grill there. It has a door prop, which isn't something we really do in America. I know in Europe, it's another thing that that is pretty common. Uh, I actually don't know why you would want it. I guess you're grilling there and you want the door propped up some, but not all the way uh, for, you know, adding air to the fire. 
Uh, it doesn't seem like it would keep too much heat in as opposed to, you know, letting it escape. So if that was the reason, I'm not entirely sure. If you have one of these or you know, why do we have that door prop there? Uh, definitely, you almost you really never see it on American Offset Smokers. So, yeah, put that in the comments for me. Thanks. Ash pullout drawer, which, you know, I would think you would probably add your charcoal and wood. Uh, for something the size of the chubby, I think you'd be using a lot more charcoal and wood chunks than actual splits. But, uh, you know, you can pull the uh, ash drawer out and also refuel as well. There does seem to be a bottom wood rack on these two. All right. And for um, accessories, you got the cover there. Um, $119.95 for the Chubby and $129.95 for the Texas Propane. All right, and now we're going to Wildfire, Australia. And this is their Longhorn Offset Competition Barbecue Smoker. It is $13.99. And we're going to notice that it looks almost exactly like the Pro Pit from Hark. Uh, which is strange to me. Did one of them copy the other one? I don't know. So, um, not quite as many pictures. I had to look, look a great deal for ones with an open chamber, uh, you know, to see the inside. You can see the upper warming tray, the bottom warming tray. It's got that front shelf, the bottom wood rack. Uh, yeah, the firebox looks very much like the Hark one. Uh, this one is three to four millimeters thick. And we're going to remember that the quarter inch steel is a little more than six millimeters. So this is a little bit thinner than the golden standard. But overall, three to four millimeters is it is thick, right? It's it's not not a joke there. Uh, in America, we have ones that are really thin. Uh, you know, maybe one to two millimeters. So, and we don't think in millimeters a lot. So it's a little bit for me to stretch there, but it's, uh, yeah, this one, it's not, it's not too thin. All right. Now we have some accessories from wildfire. Uh, we've got a cover for 8990, which I think is less expensive than the Hark one, a fire basket for 12990. You see those things that, um, they put in there that's so you can use the snake method of charcoal so it'll snake through you light it at one side and it goes through and burns for longer that way uh, i'm not a big fan of that in general for offset smokers i like you know more airflow and uh you know actual wood on fire it now it's a lot harder to manage i think it gives you better flavor overall uh, not to discourage you too much from doing this. A fire baskets can be good either way. Uh, now we see that smash burger press over there. So if you want to do smash burgers, the main set reason I, I put in this set of cast iron pans was I was wondering where you were going to smash those burgers. Uh, I didn't see a griddle from wildfire. And I guess you'd put the cast iron pan on, you know, the grill in the firebox. But those are $69.90 if you want to do smash burgers or other cooking in those in the firebox. All right, and now we've got Bullet Keg Creek Barbecue Smokers and Grills. So uh, we have the Hereford models. Uh, and one of the strange things about the Hereford models is that they are sort of bare bones. And we're going to see that in this 16-ounce stout Hereford. It is 1750. Um, it does have, uh, it appears, the, the bottom wood rack, so that's nice. But um, no pot warmer, no front shelf, uh, you know, it's just the regular. That's it. Uh, one thing that I really do like about the Bullethead Creek Barbecue Smokers and Grills is the smoke collector. I believe that Aaron Franklin himself um, invented that and writes about it in his book. Uh, you know, I think that came out somewhere around uh, 2015 or so. Uh, you see a lot of smokers with the smoke collector. And what that does is it's supposed to evenly draw the smoke over 
the the main cooking rack right from the firebox so keeps the smoke and heat uh, coming there in the middle where the food is uh, it's going to give you the the better uh, convection cooking that way though i do think that maybe there are, are tuning plates on here and i saw that in one of the options so the thing about the hereford models is that they have the base but it's kind of a la carte and i'll show you a little bit of that here on their website hereford is the one that we're actually featuring in this episode and here is the a la carte hereford 1980 so you know the stella here has some some options but if we go in here we can see the a la carte style extra cooking rack if you want it drop down shelf and here is the upgraded tuning plate so of course um it appears and we have these um, pictures but this upgraded tuning plate you know if you want uh, a fourth inch tuning plates and then even more for full length laser cut tuning plate uh, and I guess, you know, I'm not entirely sure if that would be the one with the circles as opposed to just regular uh, plates spaced out. So, um, yeah, it definitely seems like there is some metal in the bottom of these smokers for those purposes. It seems that they also have what is known as the Stella edition of all their smokers. So, um, and that seems to be just some basic kind of upgrades. When we look at this 16-inch Stella Edition smoker for 2090, we see the pot warmer on the back and the addition of the front shelf. Now, they do apparently do reverse flow. So, we have the Brahmin reverse flow uh, offset smoker. And apparently, Brahmin is to refer to a 20-inch diameter uh, chamber. So that is 4850 there. And then lastly, we have over here the Brahmin Stella edition. And I guess Stella also refers to traditional flow, but it is 4538. Uh, and let's take a look at some of these features. So um, comes with a wood grate on the inside of the smoker, apparently. Uh, and you see we have a slide damper there and a pot warmer. Uh, of course, you know, if you get the very base model, you wouldn't have the pot warmer. Uh, fold down front shelf, the wood rack, the smoke collector, removable stacks was bolted on and take it off. Okay, and this is for... Um, and I do think that the wagon wheels are an upgrade that you can get to the Hereford models. But it appears that they come with uh, this Stella Edition. Uh, this Stella Edition does come with a door counterweight. and going to make that uh, looks like a very large door. Pretty easy to open. Uh, top grill. I really like that uh, design. Looks like you can also use it as a, a warming plate. Maybe even as a griddle. Uh, you can try that. Now, laser cut wood grate there. Um, now the one thing that they mentioned that really kind of, I would like to see is this fat dam, I guess it's probably just, you know, a little bit of metal there that they keep on the lip of the main chamber, uh, connection to the firebox right there at the throat. So, you know, that could be important. You, you really don't want a huge grease fire, <laughs> uh, you know, if you're cooking, you know, some briskets and, and there's a lot of, of fat pooling on the, the bottom of your smoker. If it if the gravity is going uh, towards the firebox, that could could be a problem. So keep those things in mind. All right, and now we've got Southern Cross smokers. On the left there, we've got uh, the Chubby. So the uh, 512C, 4,750. And we've got the um, regular sc512 uh for five thousand four hundred and ninety five dollars 
All right, so we see a double slide out rack there, wood handle on top, pull bar, uh, Moberg style elbow on the stack. Uh, if you don't know who Sandy Moberg is, he's a very big name in Texas uh, pit building. He mostly does commercial offsets. So some of the biggest barbecue joints in Texas use his smokers. And he likes to put um, an elbow, uh, you know, that just curves right up on his stacks. So he usually does uh, a propane tank style smokers. So, uh, you know, having that stack at the top of the barrel, I'm not entirely sure if that's how he would do that. There is that huge door counterweight. I think that's going to do well for lifting that lid. Uh, fire rack there. Uh, interestingly, you've got that square, you know, cube firebox design slide damper. The door is on the side, uh, which don't see too often, uh, truthfully. But, you know, maybe that could be nice. All right. And now we've got red dirt smokers. So this, I believe, is a 20 inch. Uh, and that's the one they're selling. They did say that they were trying to get a 16 inch model together. Uh, so, you know, if you wanted something a bit smaller and you like this style, that could be for you. This one is currently $4,990. Uh, and at the bottom right, I have something from their website. We wanted a smoker that was true to the original Texas style round fire chamber. Chuck, uh, I think it goes on. Uh, they list several things. One thing that I wanted to note is that reverse flow design is not, uh, not original to Texas. It is original to South Georgia, I believe, where uh, Ben Lang has his company. Ben Lang invented reverse flow. He is, uh, his company's in Georgia. So just, uh, you know, Texas, you do want to know a little bit more about the history of the offset smoker, which is centered around Texas and Oklahoma. I've got a video on that and you can click the link that, uh, will be at the top of your screen. Uh, I, I found it very interesting and enlightening and, uh, you know, that's not to knock this smoker. Uh, I'm sure that it's great, whether it's inspired wholly by Texas or a little bit by Georgia as well. All right. So uh, here we've got some pictures. Really to, hard to find a picture of the inside of the smoker uh, from all the ones that I looked through. We do have that double pullout rack, though. It appears that there's a side shelf. So... You'll notice that uh, on this one on the left that it seems to be stand legs um, and, you know, wagon wheels on um, the firebox side. But this other one has casters on one side and, and wagon wheels on the other. Not entirely sure what's standard, but I imagine it would be the casters. You got that door counterweight there as well. Uh, really nice thick stack like that. Um, Firebox grill, it looks like. You pop that lid open and uh, you do it probably have a grill there in the firebox. Uh, wood rack as well. All right, and now we're on to Iron Fire Australia. These ones are super interesting looking. Uh, now that wood, wood rack, double wood there, is apparently not something they do now, as I believe... Um, you know, mesh, uh, metal there. And, uh, we'll see that in another slide. So on the left, we have the offset smoker and firebox grill. So you can get that in 16 inch, 20 inch or 24 inch. Uh, but the 16 inch, 5,100, 20 inch, 7349, the 24 inch, 9,279. We go over to the right side. They include that tower, which is um, you know, that top box there above the firebox, 16 inches, 7,100, 20 inches, 9,399, and the 24 inch is 11,815. You got those double pull out racks, the firebox grill on the one that doesn't have the tower. We see a stainless fold down front shelf. Stainless is nice, especially when you have those pull out racks. If any of the grease drips down, 
easy to clean off. The damper is there on the side. You know, you just pull them however you want. Uh, ball valve drain. And there you see the wood rack of the actual metal that it's going to be. I don't know why they have a picture of something that they don't do. But they do, and that's the one I used on the previous slide. And here we keep going. Um, the racks are no fall slide out racks. So there's a catch there in the back. Can just keep keep it there. Um, you see the tower racks there. Uh, I didn't do a lot with the numbers of the square inches for those tower racks. It's going to be more though. You know, uh, the one thing about towers in general is that the heat and temperature that you have in the main chamber is generally uh, going to be higher than than the tower. So this is one thing that you're going to want to keep in mind um, that, you know, you can still use that area. In fact, it could be great for smoking sausages, cold smoking, have that smoke and heat go all the way around the chamber, small little fire, you know. Uh, but the one thing when you're doing bigger cooks, you're going to have to use it strategically. Uh, you know, some people call it a warmer just because it, they don't use it for cooking. Uh, so how you want to use that space probably depends on whether you want to get it or not. Um, there is an ashtray underneath that fire rack. Uh, you see that there. So that's a nice feature. There's back hooks. Uh, it appears to be on the back of that tower. Um, so you can hang things there. All right. Also, you know, they have some upgrades. Custom logo there for $115. Uh, it was very hard for me to find a picture of their custom logo. That is on, I believe, a, a gravity feed unit that they sell. So they sell more than just offset smokers. Now... Upgrade for firebox floor, which they have at eight millimeters, which is a very nice thickness. But if you want it to be 12, you can go 152 on the 16 inch, 200 on the 20 or two, uh, 210 on the 24 inch. Now, this last upgrade is perhaps the most interesting thing that I found about their company. And maybe any uh, smoker here when I've been looking for, at ones in Australia. So there is a Paria uh, option in the main chamber, right? So, you know, if you want to cook over uh, coals there in the main chamber, uh, you can see that picture on the bottom left. That is the coal rack. On the right, you see where that rack, rack slides into. So you have to unbolt that little doorway, slide the rack in, uh, with with the coals and then you know you slide the food rack above that and you're cooking uh, I know that uh, there are I guess there's different ways to do it uh, I don't know exactly how close you have to be to make it a paria in in Texas there's uh, this uh, company called Gator Pits Gator Pit of Texas and he has actually a side access door right there on on the main chamber for putting uh, coal or wood into the main chamber and sort of grilling in the main chamber is, is kind of one of the things that he does. And you can actually check out uh, an episode in which I include him uh, up on the top right. But yeah, this design of sliding in a coal rack is something you don't see uh, really... I've never heard or seen about it anywhere else. So really interesting, really unique. And now it's time for charts. And one quick note and disclaimer before we get going on charts. Uh, the numbers are as accurate as I can get them. But sometimes they're estimates, um, usually by the builders themselves. The decisions you make depending on these numbers... Uh, are your own decisions, so just so you know that. I do try to make it as accurate as possible, though, and I'll try to point out some that are estimates as we go along. All right, and starting, we have the base price. This just shows you. I know I've given you the prices before, but 
kind of just seeing them on the scale here. We got the Hark Chub down there, then the Wildfire, Hark Pro Pit, then the Bullockhead Creek 16 Hereford, then the Stella 16, the Big Horn, then uh, the Southern Cross Chub, the Reverse Brahmin, the Red Dirt, the uh, Iron Fire 16 Offset, Southern Cross 512, Iron Fire 16 Offset Tower, uh, the 20 offset, then the 24 offset, then the 20 offset tower, and the 24 offset tower. Now, uh, the bottom rack centimeters squared. I really like to do the bottom rack by itself just because it gives you a better understanding of the volume, you know, the size of the chamber, as opposed to, you know, if you add in that second level rag, which we're going to do, uh, you know, it kind of skews things a little bit. So this is really going to show how much space you're going to be working with. And we see that we have uh, the Iron Fire 16 offset and with tower has the smallest sort of chamber there. Then the Hereford, uh, then uh, the Chub from Southern Cross. Interestingly enough, the Hark Chub has more space. The um, Stella, then the 20 offset, the 20 uh, tower, they're going to be the same. The, the Red Dirt Smoker, the Southern Cross 512, the Hark Pro Pit, the Wildfire. The Wildfire just slightly bigger. Um, uh, the Iron Fire 24 offset and the tower. Then, uh, largest chambers of all, we're going to have the Bullhead Creek, Brahmin, uh, Reverse, and the Bighorn. All right, and then if you calculate the Australian dollar per centimeter squared of the bottom rack, these are the numbers you get. So, you know, you want to be down on this side. The Wildfire, the best, then the Herc Shove, then the Pro Pit, and then the 16 Stella, and then the Hereford the um, Big Horn, then the Reverse Brahmin, the Southern Cross 512, then the Red Dirt, then the 512 Chub, the Iron Fire 24 Offset, 20 Offset, 24 Offset with Tower, the 16 Offset, the 20 Offset with Tower, and then the 16 Offset with Tower. All right, and now, so Standard, uh, in the main chamber now, you know these towers. I never am going to give you the centimeters squared for those uh, You know just know that it's more right, but here we go um, So with the standard we have the Hereford there with the least then the Stella uh, then um, the IFA 16 offset and with tower the Hark Chub then um, the Southern Cross Chub. So those reversed places from what we had before with uh, just the uh, bottom rack. And then we have the reverse Brahmin as well as the Big Horn. So they kind of moved into the middle of the pack. They were at the very top beforehand. Now in the middle. So those uh, second level racks making a difference for all these other ones that are, are higher than them. Heart Pro Pit, Red Dirt Smoker. Wildfire, uh, Iron Fire 20 offset, as well as the t with Tower, the uh, 512 there from Southern Cross, and then the 24 offset in Tower. All right, and now the um, Australian dollar per centimeter squared standard. So Wildfire is still there in the number one place. It, uh, you know, dropped in price per centimeter. Then the Chubb, Pro Pit, the uh, 16 Stella, 16 Hereford, the uh, 512, then the Big Horn, the Red Dirt, the um, 20 uh, Verse Brahmin, the uh, 512 Chubb, 24 Offset, 20 Offset, 24 Offset Tower, 16 Offset, 20 Offset Tower, then 16 Offset Tower. All right, and now kilograms. So these are ones that you're going to see uh, some estimates for, right? 
Uh, and I'll show you those as we go along. Um, I was happy that Iron Fire Australia did get me correct numbers, so those were helpful. The Hark Chub at 98, Pro Pit at 130, Wildfire 137. The now, see, this is where it's it's off. And I guess um, Bullock Head Creek is is the main one with the estimates now. You see that the uh, Hereford there and the 16 Stella both at 200, even though we know, you know, that uh, according to our numbers, that the Stella is a little bit larger in the main chamber as well as that front shelf. So, you know, those numbers are a little off and these two are going to come out pretty well. So if you are questioning that, maybe you're right to, I think that they're good ones. So you just have to make that decision on your own. Uh, then we have the Southern Cross uh, 512 Chubb, the Reverse Brahmin and Bighorn, also same numbers. I, I think that they both have bottom plates, though there's a little bit more bottom plate we know in the Reverse Flow one. So have to question those numbers a little bit, but I think a lesser extent maybe than, than the ones for the 16 inch. Then we've got the Southern Cross 512, the Red Dirt, um, Iron Fire Australia 16 offset, then offset with tower, then the 20 offset, then 20 offset with tower, and lastly the 24 offset and 24 offset with tower. When we go to Australian dollar per kilogram, we see we've got that Hereford there, then the Wildfire, and then the 16 Stella the chub so that hereford you might question you know is it actually a lower a number of kilograms and that's why it's doing so well there so we do have to question that uh the pro pit the ifa 20 offset ifa 24 offset ifa 16 offset ifa 24 offset uh, with tower the red dirt the 20 with uh tower the Bullockhead Creek uh, 20 Bighorn, then the 16 offset with tower, the 20 reverse Brahmin, and uh, the Southern Cross 512 and 512 Chubb. And now what I like to do is I like to put these, the dollar per kilogram, and in this case, the dollar per centimeter squared bottom rack, I like to put them on a 10 point scale from the one that did the least to the one that did the best at 10, right? For both of these, and then I like to average them together. So the scales show you the relative differences and then the average hopefully gives you something that is useful uh, in making decisions. So the uh, 16 Hereford is number one. Uh, we've already talked about some of the issues with the kilogram number on there wildfire uh then we have the 16 stella the hark chub the hark pro pit the uh 20 bighorn uh and the reverse brahmin the red dirt smoker the uh 24 offset the 20 offset then this uh, southern cross 512 the 16 offset 24 offset with tower 20 offset with tower 512 chub and then the 16 offset with tower and of course those towers you know they add and their benefit wasn't calculated in just know if you want that extra sort of space uh, at a lower temperature uh, you know that is your prerogative and you'll just have to make those adjustments as you will and then now we're going to look at the same thing, but we're going to change it to centimeters squared for standard, right? So if more uh, cooking space is your thing, maybe these numbers will help. Wildfire is number one there now. Then um, the Hereford coming after it, the Hark Chub after that, uh, the 16 Stella, the Pro Pit uh, Red Dirt Smoker. 24 offset from Iron Fire, then uh, the 20 Bighorn, the 20 offset, the 20 reverse Brahmin, uh, then the 512 from Southern Cross, 16 offset, 24 
offset with tower, 20 offset with tower, the 512 chub, and then lastly, the 16 offset with tower. All right, my thoughts. I think that the Wildfire Longhorn Offset Competition Barbecue Smoker is an amazing value and deal. You know, if you were going to get the ones that are both together, I think it stands above both the um, all the Hark stuff, right? So if if that's the route you're going, definitely I say get the Wildfire over those. Then, um, you know, best for around 2000 I would say is this 16 inch Stella edition smoker. So if that's your budget and you want handmade, uh, I know that the Hereford one, just the plain one did, did pretty well in the charts, but you're going to want that, that front shelf. <laughs> I'm just saying what it gives you in getting food in and out of the smoker and, and having stuff there is just, it's worth the money. So I would upgrade to the Stella edition smoker. And then uh, the one that I would choose overall, uh, best traditional flow for around 4,500. Now, so uh, it's the one that I like. It had it's it looks most like uh, the ones from Texas. Of course, you could argue that uh, if we'd gotten actual numbers from the um, Cannon Pits Australia, maybe they would have something that could compete on that front. Uh, of course, we didn't just because they don't have those posted. So, you know, take that as you will. Then the best reverse flow around 5,000 uh, is this Brahmin reverse flow offset smoker. I know that the red dirt was close, right? They were about, they're about the same price. They're both reverse flows. The one thing is, is that my preference is for a larger chamber, um, which helps with heat distribution. I, I think, you know, it's, it's better overall. And again, same thing. You can get that second level rack in this if, if that's what you want. Uh, not to say that the, the Red Dirt Smoker would be a bad choice, especially if you live closer to their shop. But again, this would be my choice. Uh, I'm not a reverse flow guy. Like I said, the one I would choose would be the big horn there. Uh, I know that my thoughts are, are coming out pretty strong for Bullockhead Creek, uh, but I do think that it's a uh, really good value and really good smokers. Uh, lastly, um, you see the wildfire emblem down there in the bottom. And uh, I put that there just because the, the one thing that stands out about them is that Perea. Now, you can actually get towers on these uh, ones from Bullock Creek, if that's what you want, and maybe be um, comparable to the wildfire ones. So, you know, if you want to price that out, do. Uh, I didn't here for this episode. But the one thing is that Perea, if you really want to grill in the main chamber, they could be the ones for you to go with. Uh, that's just um, a question of what you want, but it seems like that's a pretty cool and good option. Um, you know, I don't think that I would do it necessarily. I think that I would grill, uh, with this big horn, right. With, uh, the grill they have on the side, but if that's not enough grilling space for you and you're planning on grilling, you know, high heat a lot and you want something that does everything, maybe that's, uh, your, your path. All right. And of course, as always, you know, if you have one of these smokers, especially add your review to the comments. Let's help all of us get uh, the best smoker that best fits our needs as we can, uh, you know, and help help us all, you know, make the best decision. And as I always say, go get your smoke on.